Hello everyone, welcome back to Automation channel. I am Rameshwar, your go-to source for all things in test automation. First of all, wishing each and every one of you a happy new year 2024 in advance. May this year be filled with joy, success and exciting adventures. Let's start this journey together exploring new technologies, learning and growing as a community. Cheers to 2024. Today we have an exciting topic lined up that is Selenium 4.0. In today's video we will discuss brief history of Selenium, explore its architecture and we will also talk about key features of Selenium 4.0 and also highlight the differences between Selenium 3.0 and 4.0. And at last we will also talk about what it exactly means for you and what factors you should consider while migrating to Selenium 4. So let's get started. Selenium, as we know it today, owes its inception to Jason Huggins. He created it in 2004. Jason Huggins was developing a web application that required frequent testing. So he decided to automate the repetitive task and he developed a tool called Selenium Core using JavaScript Sandbox. So in case of Selenium RC, we inject the JavaScript into the browser for automation purpose. And that was the reason Selenium RC didn't become popular. Because people were afraid of using Selenium RC because of its JavaScript injection, it also breaches the cross origin policy and so and it is a good opportunity for potential hackers to hack into any web application with the help of javascript at that time qtp was more popular over time selenium got expanded and simon stewart started working on a tool called selenium web driver which focused on using native libraries for automation purposes. So we will talk about Selenium WebDriver more. So when we see the hierarchy of Selenium, the first version is Selenium RC, that is Selenium 1.0 and later it became Selenium WebDriver, that is Selenium 2.0. So Selenium 2.0 had both the things, Selenium RC as well as Selenium WebDriver. And Later, they released more robust and flexible version that is Selenium 3 and it only consisted Selenium WebDriver. It, it did not have Selenium RC. They also fixed many issues with the Selenium WebDriver in Selenium 3 version. And later they released Selenium 4 which we are going to discuss in detail. Now you might be wondering why there is another diagram uh, saying the hardware, system software and application software and user, right? We know it since we are a child, right? The reason behind this diagram is to explain how automation is happening in the background. People think that they know Selenium but they miss this fundamental thing about the Selenium tool. Basically, how this computer system works, right? Basically, we have an hardware. On top of hardware, there is an operating system running. We call it system software. And on top of operating system, we have the application software which are available for end users. So, if we talk, if we take an example of Google Chrome. So, Google Chrome is an end user application software. So, user interacts with Google Chrome whatever the actions he performs on a web page that is rendered inside a Chrome browser uh, that it is the responsibility of the applicant software to record the user actions and wrap them into the into the instructions that can be understood by operating system 
and at last operating system sends those instructions to the hardware for execution and then hardware sends the response back to the operating system then operating system sends response back to the application software and we see the end result on the browser so that is what happens when a human or user interacts with the application software now same thing is done with the help of automated software so selenium is nothing but an automated software which simulates the user actions into a format that operating system understands and how it is done it is done with the help of native method interfaces so just wanted to highlight it there before proceeding further now let's understand the selenium version 3.0 architecture it is very simple we as we know selenium has client libraries available in different languages like perl python java c sharp so you may choose any language that you are comfortable in so in these languages they have client libraries that is jar files in case of java and we have to use these jar files in the or automation project they must be in the class part then you write the automation scripts using these uh, functions that are defined in the jar files now the j these jar files communicate with the browser drivers browser drivers uh, like there is a chrome driver for chrome for chrome browser there is a firefox driver for firefox browser and there is internet explorer driver for internet explorer similarly for microsoft edge now who developed this driver right this develop these browser executables are developed by the browser developer itself like the google chrome developers they develop the browser executable for google chrome similarly internet explorer and microsoft and firefox as well so, so what selenium web driver does it sends instructions to the browser drivers in the form of json wire protocol now what is this json wire protocol json wire protocol is nothing but a http request formed into a json syntax now the selenium selenium sends these instructions in the form of using json wire protocol to the browser driver and then browser driver reads that instruction and convert it into the native method calls and then browser drivers converts these instructions into the the native method calls that can be understood by the real browsers and then real browsers ultimately communicate with the operating system for operations once the operation or action is performed then the real browser sends back the response to the browser drivers and then again browser driver converts that response into the into a format that selenium understand and they send back and it sends the response back using json wire protocol so in case of selenium rc the browser driver part was absent because they injected javascript directly into the browser and interacted with the web elements on the browser but in case of selenium web driver there is a browser executable so there is no direct communication happening between selenium to visual browsers it is happening through a browser drivers using json wire protocol okay now let's talk about selenium 4.0 architecture it is i would say it is completely same as selenium 3.0 except the communication protocol right so in selenium 4.0 the major change is the communication protocol earlier it was json wire protocol in this we have w3c protocol now why we need w3c protocol right selenium 3 was working fine people were happy with it then why change this protocol in selenium 4.0 if you take a closer look it is very obvious right so when we talk about any browsers all browsers are w3c compliant now what is w3c w3c is nothing but world wide web consortium organization and they are responsible for developing 
the standards that are required for World Wide Web applications. Why these standards are required? Because if uh, it should, it must follow a certain architecture, certain standards while developing the browsers to have the uniformity in communication as well as to have uh, the reduced risk uh, for attackers. Right. So that's the reason the real the browsers and as well as the browser drivers are W3C compliant. Now if Selenium is also W3C compliant, then it will make the automation even smooth, stable and user friendly. And earlier we used some issues with Selenium 3 as well. Uh, if the application and there was a flakiness in script execution, right? Or uh, the way Selenium interacts with different browser also differs. So that's why the Selenium uh, developers decided to uh, have the Selenium also W3C compliant. If we talk about the key features of Selenium 4.0, the first and foremost is the enhanced selenium grid in case of selenium 3 we had a separate selenium hub and we have separate selenium nodes so we need to first start the selenium hub then we need to start the selenium nodes and register those nodes with selenium grid and then the selenium grid is supposed to send the execution request to the respective nodes but the selenium 4 provides much greater flexibility with Selenium Grid. Also, it has, I think there are four or five options that people can use the grid. We will discuss about Enhanced Selenium Grid later in this series. Now, in Selenium 4.0, Selenium ID is also upgraded. The Selenium, in version Selenium 3.0, the Selenium IDE was also using the JSON wire protocol for communication. So they had to upgrade IDE as well uh, to enable W3C compliance. Selenium 4 also provides relative locators. We will discuss about it in detail. Now Selenium also changed complete look and feel of their website. Also they provided improved documentation for all functions in the Selenium grid as well as Selenium 4. They have also enabled Chrome debugging tool protocol. So in Selenium 3, we didn't have uh, a way to communicate with Chrome developer tool, right? Which we use for identifying the web elements, see the, uh, say the request and response in the network tab. There is also source tab. In some cases, there was a need to communicate with the Chrome debugging protocol also. So that support is also added in Selenium 4. And there is also a better way of handling windows and tab management in Selenium 4. And more importantly, they also deprecated some of the desired capabilities in Selenium 3, which are not required. And they also did some modifications in the actions class that also we will see in the detail. Now, what are the key differences between the Selenium 3 and Selenium 4? The first and foremost is this protocol. Selenium 4 uses W3C protocol, which is compliant to the browser executable as well as the browser itself. And Selenium 3 used JSON wire protocol. And above, from implementation's perspective, the Chrome driver class extends the Chromium driver in case of Selenium 4. And in case of Selenium 3, the Chrome driver directly extends the remote web driver class. And in Selenium 4, there is a optimized Selenium grid with enhanced UI and also they have enabled inbuilt support for Docker. And in case of Selenium, Selenium 3, there was no inbuilt support for Docker. And in Selenium 4, we also get the enhanced Selenium IDE, which is, which is also improved GUI and, and it is also compliant with W3C protocol. And Selenium ID is just available as a Firefox add-on in case of Selenium 3. About the grid, 
in selenium 4 testers no need to start hub and node separately every time if they want to perform automation testing using selenium grid in selenium 3 the tester had to start selenium node and hub separately which was a difficult task in selenium 3 what it means for you right what are the features that attracts you more the the first thing is the selenium web driver itself it is more modern active and w3c compliant which brings us a way of standard also it also provides us better stability during cross browser execution and all that stuff because of the w3c compliance like selenium 3 it also communicates with the browser using native method interfaces and it also provides the better browser support there is also an enhanced api for communication and selenium 4 also has improved performance and it also have support for advanced feature like they have improved the way we interact with the frames the selenium 4 has better mechanism for dealing with uh, new tabs windows and frames it also support parallel execution using selenium grid and selenium grid also comes with uh, various options and it is also like selenium 3 it also provides integration with testing frameworks like testing j unit and n unit there you have it now here comes the question should i really upgrade to selenium 4 or not well it depends on various parameters like uh, is your organization ready for it or are they happy with the current infrastructure that they have in their organization running but if you are looking for better browser stability better automation script execution support if you want to have advanced features of selenium 4 in your test automation framework then then definitely you should consider migrating it look based on these parameters you can decide um, is it a good time to migrate or not but i would suggest if you are eagerly looking to add the advanced selenium features uh, in your test automation framework then you should consider migrating it and if you are also migrating the cloud for example all of your resources are running in aws and now you are your organization is migrating to azure right then during this migration you should instead of migrating the current infrastructure as is you should upgrade it to selenium 4 and then migrate it then that is a good opportunity to for migration that's all for today's lesson i hope you enjoyed the first session on selenium 4 thank you so much for watching i will see you soon